I'm Scott Walker and this is Walks on the Wild Side and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the most important pieces of kit for wildlife photographers after your camera and lenses and that is the gimbal. Welcome back to Walks on the Wild Side. So let's talk about the gimbal and why I think it's so important. So the first thing is about movement. If you're tracking anything that's moving, this gives you complete fluid movement to follow it around. But not only that, when you stop using it, it maintains its position by its natural stability until you use it again. So I might be pointing up at a bird and let go and it stays there and then I track around and I'm pointing down at something in the water and it stays there. And this is something that you don't get with a ball head on your tripod. <coughs> now the first step to setting up your gimbal properly is to make sure that your tripod is perfectly level and it helps to have a really good sturdy tripod. I use the Kenro heavy duty carbon fibre tripod and I'm really happy with it. It hardly moves at all, even in the strongest of winds. My only criticism of the tripod is that the tripod feet come a little bit loose too easily. So Kenro, if you're listening, let's get something that tightens up those feet a bit better. But other than that, it's a really great tripod. But you can pick up this tripod for about 300 quid. Now, in order to make sure that the tripod is perfectly level, you want to use the spirit bubble that's built into the tripod. Most tripods have them, but if yours doesn't, you can buy a spirit bubble cube that clips into the hot shoe of your camera for just a few pounds online. Now you wanna make sure that that spirit bubble is right in the center of the circle. And to do that, you adjust the legs of your tripod. And that might be with a twist lock release like mine, or you might have clip locks. You can move those legs up and down and get the spirit bubble smack bang in the center of the circle. So the next step, we're gonna put the camera on the gimbal and you wanna make sure that you have the quick release plate attached to the foot of your lens's collar. And you simply slip the quick release plate into the groove and tighten it up. Now there are four main adjustment points on your gimbal. The first one is the arm that allows you to move the position of the camera up and down. Next, you've got the forwards and backwards position of the camera. Thirdly, you've got this knob that allows you to tilt up and down. And finally, you have another knob that allows you to pan left and right. And we'll move these in turn to make sure that our gimbal is perfectly balanced. So the next step is to find the right position for your camera forwards and backwards. And to do this, you wanna make sure that the tilt knob is loosened off and we look at where the camera tilts. Now this one is tilting forward, which means the weight is towards the front. So we wanna move the weight back slightly by moving the camera further along the quick release plate. So now let's try it. It's coming down towards the back, so I've moved it too far. Just nudge it forward a little bit. Try it again, still slightly too much. And we're finishing in about a horizontal position there. So that is just fine. Next, we want to sort out our camera's vertical position. And to do this, we loosen the knob on the back of the arm and move the camera up so that the center of the lens is about level with the top of the gimbal. And when it's there, we'll tighten that knob back up again. Now, you want to move the camera up and down and check if it stays in its position when you let go of it. And this one does, so that's about right. But if yours doesn't, then continue to adjust it up and down till you find a place where the camera maintains its position when you move it up and down. And then finally, once you've done that, you can loosen off the knob that allows you to pan and check when you move the camera's position 
Does it stay where it should be under its own stability? And this one does, so that's just great. Now I'm using the Kenro GHC1 gimbal, and this is the best gimbal I've ever had. The fluid motion is absolutely fantastic. You can pick this gimbal up for about 200 quid, and by my reckoning, it's worth every penny. Now that we're all set up, let's briefly talk about the technique that we're going to use. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you're going to look through the viewfinder or use the screen on the back. Either way, you want to have one hand on the lens and the other on your camera so that they act as a counterbalance to each other. It makes sure you get that little bit more smooth motion. Now, you probably naturally do this if you're using the zoom wheel or the manual focusing wheel, but even if you're already focused or you're using a prime lens, you still want to keep one hand on the lens just to make sure you've got that counterbalance and smooth motion. So hopefully you saw how useful the gimbal is in action. What do you think is the next most important bit of kit for a wildlife photographer after your camera and lens? Well, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. If you found today's video useful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell button so that you get notified next time I put out content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.